Hi, I am Markus. I'm a Bollicott developer. Uh, this is my story. Unfortunately, um, I don't have, to have enough time to go through the whole story, whole my life story. But let's look at the last two years, what I've been doing. I've been working for Yle, uh, where we built uh, uh, this kind of uh, Yle-wide Yle API layer for servicing uh, Yle uh, end-user applications. So we built a few microservices that will self, uh, serve Yle content. We worked as a small dedicated team. At the beginning, there was actually multiple people doing their separate services, but uh, quite uh, soon we noticed that it's better to have just one team responsible for all of the services. So uh, it was both already in the beginning there were a few services out and we were adding more and more services. So half of the stuff, stuff was about maintaining the existing services and the other part was developing uh, new features to existing services. Uh, I think this is the current situation. So we have 14 of these APIs in production, and they are now serving many of the Yle's biggest applications like Yle Arena. It's, it's totally dependent on, on these APIs. So what are those services? Okay, the main job of one service is to, um, so that it has REST JSON API that end user applications, both mobile and web applications can use. But also, like all of those services, do get some data from legacy systems or then they pull some uh, external services like Facebook or something like that. So they do some kind of polling. Also, do, also they pre-calculate some data. So there's some uh, uh, data crunch, uh, crunching happening in some of the services too. And okay, so what's interesting about this? Uh, those services are implemented in three different languages: JavaScript, Scala, and Clojure. And I think I think people have, of course, a lot of uh, opinions. What's the best programming language and, and such? But uh, rarely you have a situation where you can actually work for two years and compare those languages in real use. Because, of course, those APIs are a bit different, but overall they are pretty similar. So they get some JSON data from database and then they serve, serve, manipulate that data and then they serve it as a JSON to, to end user. And if you do those services in three different languages, you do get some uh, feeling about how, how those languages work in this context. So this is something that I'm going to talk today. What, what are the key differences when we use those languages in this our context? Okay, build tools. Of course, uh, when you select the programming language, build tool is like uh, Overall, the tooling is very important. So in JavaScript, we used to use Grunt. Then uh, later on in, in New Year services, we are using Gulp. And my worry is that tomorrow there will be another tool that we have to use in our service. So we already have like this kind of uh, in JavaScript projects that, okay, uh, every time there's a new service, somebody wants to use uh, yet another tool that is better. At least that happened to us. Scala, what's the case in, in, in Scala? Um, in here, we have this Satan's um, simple build tool. Uh, if you have used it, uh, one thing about this tool, I'm, I'm sure it's not simple, let's put it that way. Uh, so we have spent quite a lot of time uh, 
playing with this nice tool. Uh, closure, on the other hand, we're using Leningen. And in our cases, uh, they are all small projects. It has worked uh, very well, and it has been fast enough. So I know there is this pool tool available, but we haven't had any reason for, for choosing any other tool. So Closure has worked very well in this sense. Another thing, in our case, JSON is everywhere. We serve JSON. Most of our databases are storing JSON, and also many of the external services are using JSON. So that's important, of course, how to uh, manipulate the JSON data. In JavaScript, OK, come on. It's JavaScript object notation. So manipulating JSON in, in JavaScript, it's no brainer. Of, of course, it's, it's going to work OK. Scala. What we are doing in Scala, it looks like this. So there are some services where we use this JSON4S. This is just some example on how to produce a, a JSON object, object. So there's a DSL, and there's a lot of stuff how to map from the case class and so on. Of course, some of the services are using Play Framework. So they have a, uh, they're using this Play JSON which is nice. It has the same features, a bit different DSL and, and a bit different way how to manipulate, uh, uh, manipulate data back and forward. Uh, on the other hand, for some external service cases, we often uh, have to handle all this, um, uh, I would say, dynamic JSON. So we don't even know what come, comes in, but we still have to probably manipulate with regex some, some of the JSON fields, etc. So. Uh, the, we, those in dynamic cases, we have now been using this JSON, which is actually also a pretty, pretty nice uh, library, and it's more like a bare metal thing. So you can, there's just normal maps and so on. But, but overall, having all of these tools, and actually when I was looking at the JSON 4S uh, website, they were saying that, okay, there's also six another, six another uh, libraries for handling JSON in Scala. And if you compare data formats, I would say the JSON is one of the easiest data formats. So this is ridic ridiculously hard, actually. And in Clojure, we are just doing things like this. So uh, when, when JSON comes in, we just pass it to the uh, normal, to, into the normal our closure map. And when we need uh, JSON again, we just generate string from it. And all the J JSON manipulation happens, uh, happens in a way that we just manipulate ordinary, idiom in an idiomatic way, just closure data structures. We don't even care what, what, I mean, like, overall, that, okay, first it was JSON, but we are not manipulating di JSON directly ever, which makes things uh, a lot easier. And in our case, the JSON objects are so small, so this is the performance-wise, this works totally well. So this is really, uh, I think it's, it's even better than in the JavaScript, which, which is, I think is a nice thing. OK, this is special in our context. We do have uh, those background jobs, and we want them to run as fast as possible. So we often utilize parallel computing to make the, you know, make it faster. In JavaScript, there's no native support for this because, you know, Node.js is a single threaded process, and 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 that's it's like a limitation. There is this uh, library called Parallel JS, which can do things like that, but it has a lot of limitations, and it's actually starting the whole Node.js processes multiple times, and etc. So we haven't even tried it. So in JavaScript services, we don't utilize parallel computing. So it's a limitation. Uh, in Scala, this is a normal map. If you have seen a Scala code. Unfortunately, I have to show some Scala code here, too. Uh, so in here, if you put just par there, it means that now it will utilize uh, Scala's parallel collections and then it will calculate the stuff in 
in parallel utilizing a thread pool, which will make it faster. And also in our case, if we need like it to run even faster, we just add more CPUs it, and it scales pretty linearly. Closure, map, and pmap. So it, it also works very well. And if you compare to Scala and Closure, you can notice one thing. So in Closure, to get parallel version, it's a one character. <laughs> Scala four. So four times better Closure, yeah. <laughs> Excellent, especially in this case. OK, what do I mean by micro caches? So I don't know if it's, this is a correct term, but we often utilize just some short living in memory caches for handling uh, situations where, f for example, when, when there's this, uh, there was this competition when people are throwing this stick, javelin, I mean. So it's very popular in Finland, and so there are a lot of people uh, coming in at, at exactly at the same time. So we can uh, save time by just having some in memory caches for at like a few, few seconds or so. The problem in this case is that with JavaScript, again, with the Node.js, it's a cache per uh, one Node.js process. So if we have, say, let's say, eight cores in our machine, we have eight separate uh, uh, caches in this way. So eventually in Node.js case, uh, we have actually uh, in, in one service this problem. That if we add more CPUs, the cache works in a worse way. So we don't get more performance. And also, it consumes uh, more memory. And, and of, of course, in this case, JVM is very good, good at this. And both the Closure and Scala have very efficient ways of doing this, uh, having non-blocking cache, caches inside. One could say that, of course, you can solve this problem by uh, adding a memcached or, or something like that. But for our case, it's much simpler to just install this one service and have this support. So JavaScript, not very good for this. OK, I said that we are maintaining a lot of stuff. So there's some stuff that has been already two years in a production. So Node.js. I think this is the way to go with the Node.js. So incremental upgrades. Unfortunately, we often have a situation that certain service, we don't touch it for uh, half a year. So after half a year, there's, there's some uh, problems on, on getting the development environment back, to, back into use again. So we have felt the pain. However, yeah, <laughs> I mean, in, in this, I, I, I think that in Scala they did this really, really wrong. And, uh, uh, and the, it's the libraries. Those libraries depend on a certain version of Scala. And if we want to upgrade the Scala, and then, we, then the another library depends on something. And it's a vicious circle. And, and actually, the current situation is that uh, I think we're running a lot of very old versions of Scala and libraries because it's just too much of hassle to upgrade the stuff. And closure. Hey, but it's, this is like. Yeah, I'm a Closure fan, but actually, Closure really shines on this two years, and I think it's easy to upgrade the version. The core uh, is very stable, and for reason or not, also, also the ecosystem works works in that way that libraries have some kind of a backwards compatibility. So, so it hasn't caused us, I mean, pain at all. Learning, our team hasn't been, actually I'm, I'm not the team anymore also, but our team hasn't been the same all the time. So sometimes there are some people left and there's somebody uh, coming in and so on. And it's not that easy to find a developers that, know, that are experts in JavaScript, Clojure and Scala. Yeah, it, it's pretty hard to find those people. So. When people come in, they have to learn one of those languages. So it has been fun to follow how people learn these languages. In case of JavaScript, it's actually, it, it has been pretty easy. But I, I guess 
people know a bit of JavaScript. It's not that uh, exotic language in that sense. Scala, this is my feeling, it's hard. Um, of course, the Scala book, I mean, the specific, uh, this basic programming book, it's a that thick, so there's a lot of stuff. And I know people say that, okay, there's this Scala best parts and what, what have you. But maybe it's our uh, technology choices, li library choices, but especially debugging uh, problems in the production, you have to know also the worst past parts of the Scala. So, so, so you have to learn quite a lot to, to maintain these services. And then in a closure, it's a medium. I would say that it's, it's, there's a learning curve for people in this syntax, the prefix notation and those freaking parentheses and, and that stuff. But I think especially debugging problems, people are very in a very fast way in a track of doing something compared to, for example, Scala. Okay, last but not least. Okay, of course this somehow matters. Of, of course now we are, we are going to into the direction of dynamic and, and static typing and that, that kind of stuff. But overall, uh, in, in JavaScript world, uh, full build with the tests, our test suits uh, for one service, they are end-to-end -end in that sense that there's some data in database and then we call the REST API and check the REST API works perfectly. So we have to start the server and so so. Uh, and so it's, it's some, some seconds in, in, in JavaScript case. In, I think this is uh, <coughs> underestimate, but, but in, anyway, so in, in Scala we're talking about something like two minutes. So it's decades more. And again, closure is somewhere in between of those. And it's actually, uh, we have this funny joke, it's easy to know when somebody is doing some of those uh, uh, Scala projects. You know, you, you can notice it from, from the noise of the fan. Yeah, it's like, okay, this guy is main maintaining it, something. But yeah, it, it's, it's really happening. Uh, so, okay. Few findings, and now the final verdict based on these results. Woo! Applause for closure! <laughs> no, but yeah, I think our team actually made the decision uh, already like a uh, few months or half a year ago or something like that, that all the new services will be implemented in closure. And also, if we need a new version, like version two of certain uh, service, we are now moving into closure uh, service by service. So it's, it, has, it has actually been, in our case, the best choice from, from these three. So, thanks. <laughs>